Thanks for watching the video. I'm Diego. For the past few years, this channel has been me gardening and composting. But that's not all that I do because I'm also a farm podcaster. Given that, I'm going to start sharing interviews with you on this channel every Monday. But don't worry, the composting and gardening content isn't going away. That'll be showing up every Friday. So interviews on Monday, composting and gardening on Friday. There's a lot of content coming your way, both in terms of interviews and brand new gardening content. So stick around. I think you're going to enjoy it and get a lot out of it. Let's get Interview Monday rolling with Ben Grimes of Dawnbreaker Farms. Today I'm at the Carborough Farmers Market outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm at the booth of Dawnbreaker Farms and we're going to talk to the farmer and owner of Dawnbreaker Farms, Ben Grimes about selling meat in a farmer's market, something that's traditionally very hard to do because it's in a cooler. Stay tuned to find out how he does it and what he's doing coming up. So Ben, you have a pretty unique cooler set up here when it comes to meat. You don't have a bunch of large coolers. You have a lot of little coolers that are divided up with signage. Can you talk about why you've chosen to go this route? Yeah, so I chose this route uh, just for better display. So we have one or two products per cooler so you can open it up and it's easy to find your product um, rather than opening up a big cooler it's all a big jumbled mess and trying to find the right product and it's how most meat vendors do it how I even started um, this is just clear concise um, and it's easy for the customer to find what they need or for you to help them out get what they need you're dividing it up side by side, like you try and put pork in one section, mm -hmm. chicken in one section. How, how are you arranging all the meat? That's exactly right. So we have chicken on one side, pork on the other, and then we kind of have the highlights, our best sellers are pork chops and bacon. And so we have these up front because those are the stars of the show, so to say. And you have it arranged in a U shape that's to create a flow yep. through here? That's exactly right. Yeah, to kind of create a flow and a shopping experience. Um, so like this is drumsticks and thighs, so if you open it up, there's an ice pack here. You lift up the ice pack, and you got thighs on one side and drumsticks on the other. And so it's very easy and accessible. And the uh, ice packs help keep everything frozen solid. For ice packs, you really like the cooler shock ice packs. Each one of these little blue coolers has one on bottom, one on top. That's correct. And that keeps the meat nice and cool or frozen the whole Absolutely time. Absolutely frozen, yeah, frozen solid. So there's no thawing and there's no... Um, loss of product due to broken seals, or very little loss of product. So Ben, you have some really unique signage. You have some really nice signage here at the market, Dawnbreaker Farm, Meat Market. How has your signage changed over time and what are you trying to convey with the signage? Um, yeah, so when I first started out I just had a generic banner that just said Dawnbreaker Farms with a different logo. It didn't have any animals on it, it didn't say anything about meat. And um, I mean, it was attractive, but it didn't really convey what this was. So now from basically anywhere within eye distance, you can see what this booth has um, and get a, a shot of what we're about and what kind of um, product you're gonna get here. And so it just, it, it stands out everywhere. And I think one hard thing about selling meat is that it is not as attractive as putting a tomato on the table. That tomato sells itself, but a cooler full of meat doesn't necessarily um, say much. So the signs help everything kind of stand out and show what we're doing here. Sign, you have meat market, so you have the word meat, you have local, you have pasture raised, you have sustainable. Those are all buzzwords, all buzzwords. that you feel resonates with the local customer yep. base here. Yeah, so that's what, those are kind of words that I picked out that I thought that most people came to the farmer's market for. Uh, they wanted the local economy, they wanted, you know, pasture raised, ethical health, and then sustainable, something better for the environment than what they're getting at the grocery store. So those are all things that draw people to the farmer's market. You know, you, you've gone to a clover system for your point of entry, your POS system. Yeah. How have you liked the clover? I think it's pretty great. Um, it's got a lot of benefits to it. Um, one, it's a nice, attractive, professional display. Um, it shows people right away that it hit credit cards, which I think is a big uh, sales boost. Um, and it's got a range of different data collecting things, so you can see what you've sold, you can see uh, what kind of payments went through, you can see who your customers were, how many transactions you've had, what time those transactions occurred. 
Um, so it's really a great database, uh, as well as just a really nice, easy to work cash register. What percentage of your sales are via card? About half and half. About so half. about half are credit card, half are cash. And it's a Saturday today. How many sales would you expect to do today? How many transactions? On a normal Saturday, I'm going to do between 50 and 60. Um, today's a special event, so I might do, you know, 60, 65. With the Clover system, can you walk me through a transaction? Yeah, so a customer will come up with product, and um, there's a register app on this tablet. So there's different apps on here, and I click on the register app, the top left, and then I click on, I have different things here. So I have chicken, pork, turkey, lamb, uh, there's credibles, and then this stuff's for the online store, so I don't do that for the farmer's market. Uh, but I click on chicken, and then, you know, let's say it's a whole chicken that weighs four and a quarter pounds, and then it pops up like that, and then you just click pay. And then you have options for cash, check, um, credit card. So it's a pretty easy way to do it. With the Clover system, what would have been the main advantages of that? Uh, just professional appearance, uh, ease of credit card transactions, uh, and data. Data has been really, really big for me. Uh, keeping the data on the what sold, when it sold, who bought it, um, you know, and just so then all that data kind of feeds into allowing you to make informed decisions about you know your business how much does a system like that cost uh new i think they're like a thousand to twelve thousand twelve hundred dollars and you got you found yours used i did get mine used i got lucky and found one used on a craigslist and is there it's just a transactional fee for the card or is there any sort of mm -hmm. monthly fee there's a monthly fee so it's uh i think it's forty dollars a month and then there's a transactional fee per per credit card transaction uh, and it's worth every penny. Small one. Small one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. You should hold on to that little in a second. When it comes to selling meat at the farmer's market, what do you think are the keys or tips for people out there in terms of booth display? Um, I think make it easy to find the product. Um, don't have one big cooler full of jumbled stuff that really is hard on customers. Uh, it's also hard on you when you can't find, you know, the pork chop because there's 20 other different products in your cooler. Um, I think that um, being clean and professional is really important. One thing about meat is you really need to instill confidence in the customers because uh, it is a little, um, it's different. And it's weird buying meat from the farmer's market versus at the grocery store. I think our culture has a lot of uh, Oh, fears about buying meat, yeah. about eating meat, and so the more that you can do to be professional and clean is really important. So don't come looking like you just rolled off your tractor, you know, take a shower, shave, come clean. Um, and then as well, just display. So, you know, good signage um, so that people know what it is and um, know how to find it. So ben is a livestock farmer. How live or die is the farm by the farmer's market sales? Uh, it's, yeah, totally dependent on the farmer's market right now. Um, you know, the sales of the farmer's market are my primary source of income. So without those sales, uh, the farm really um, can't continue with uh, cash flow. Over time, have you found that your sales have grown the longer you've been at the market as you've established oh, yeah. a reputation? Absolutely. So sales have really grown uh, both in terms of the relationships that I've built uh, as well as uh, the amount of product, diversity of product that I'm bringing and just the way that I'm displaying it has been huge. And they all kind of cycle together and um, feed one another. No, obviously it's dependent, but what would you say for new livestock farmers to expect at a farmer's market? How long is it going to take to build a steady farmer's market customer base? Last year, was a, it really started kicking into high year. Uh, so then that was my third year at this farmer's market. So that's, you know, relationships have built and everything. I think you can come in and do it quicker. I know that if I went into a new farmer's market now, um, you know, if I came to the same farmer's market now with what I know and the product that I have, I could do it a lot faster. Uh, I could probably build it within you know six months a year, uh, but 
especially starting out, it does take time to kind of build that clientele. What's the biggest change you've made in your display over the years? Uh, I went from, you know, standard having a cooler behind one big cooler, big jumbled mess, to having, you know, the small coolers set out uh, with individual products in them. And then the way that it's shaped in a U um, versus just one table standing out front and also the signage. So those are all different factors that uh, changed and developed over time. What are the most common questions you get? Are the animals happy? Are the chickens free range? Um, is it uh, is it organic? Is it GMO free? Um, is this from your farm? You know, the free range question, how do you answer that? Because they're in chicken tractors, so how, how do you explain that? Depends. Depends on who it is and how much time I have. Uh, if it's if I just want to give a quick answer, yes, because it's way more free range than anything anyone ever is expected to, or if they ever expect. Um, the industry free range is you know abysmal. The standards there, um, but if it's someone who is able to absorb a little more information and I have the time to give it to them, I'll explain what it is and why uh, I choose to use chicken tractors versus just let them run around. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. I appreciate that. If you want to watch more videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to check out some of the other content that I produce, like podcasts, check them out using the link below. Thanks again.